Okay, so hello, uh, my tables. Good day. So, the exercise this week will be about nervous tissue, and this is uh, gonna be quite short compared to the previous exercise. And credits to Hungara, basic histology, and I took most of the reference notes and material from this, oops, from this uh book and. Not really that much from Ross and Paulina this week. Okay, so let's start. So first is your spinal cord. Your spinal cord, first we'll have to delineate the white matter and gray matter. So the gray matter is the the H-shaped mass, as what, uh, what was described by Honkera. So it's the H, letter H-shaped mass here, okay? So, with that said, the gray matter characteristically has... Uh, more glial cells and neuronal cell bodies, not abundant astrocytes, astrocytes, and they also have motor neurons, particularly in the ventral horns. Okay, so safe to say it's more neuron rich. It's found in the central or the letter H, and it's neuron rich. Okay, whereas in your white matter or the periphery, you will see uh, an this area is has less or th they have less amount of neurons, okay? Not particularly absent because they're still, uh, let's just say less, okay? So it surrounds the gray matter. It contains primarily oligodendrocytes and also tracts of myelinated axons, okay? So the periphery is your white matter. Also here below, we'll also just uh, tackle some uh, glial cells that we will encounter now and also later. So first is your oligodendrocytes. As that was mentioned, they are both rich. Uh, they are rich in the gray matter and they are also present in the white matter. So they're located in the CNS and they function for myelin production and electrical insulation. You also have astrocytes that are particularly star-shaped. They are located in the CNS still and they have structural and metabolic support. They function for that support of neurons, especially in synapse, and for repair processes. Uh, your ependymal cells as well. So in the next slide, uh, we will zoom in more in the central canal. This here in the center is called your central canal of your spinal cord, okay? And they are lined there particularly with your ependymal cells. So ependymal cells will aid in the production and movement of CSF. You also have your Schwann cells. This will be portrayed later on, uh, particularly in the nerve uh, sections of your sciatic nerve found in your peripheral nerves and they function for myelin production and electrical stimulation as stated here and lastly is your satellite cells so they are found in your peripheral ganglia and they function for structural and metabolic support for neuronal cell bodies okay so we'll move on so here you can see that the central canal is lined with ependymal cells and true enough here it's true are present. So here in the this bottom picture is your central canal and these cells lining here all over labeled as E as your ependymal cells. Okay. Ependymal cells, central canal. So if you ask, you're asked to identify the specimen, if this is shown, your answer will be spinal cord. If I identify the area pointed at it is the central canal. If it's identified the cell, it is ependymal cell. Okay, so here again is our representation of the spinal cord. So I don't mind that P and A. P and A here means posterior horn and anterior horn. Uh, uh, don't want to make you nosebleed, but that's in neuroanatomy. Okay, but okay, it can touch a little with histo that the anterior horn is also known as the ventral horn. And then they fu function for motor processes. And while well, the piece, the posterior horn or the dorsal ganglion or dorsal horn, and they function for more sensory processes. Okay, and they're still both found in your gray matter the gray matter is the h the white matter is in the periphery this one labeled as a is a zoomed in version or hbo version of your gray matter so as what i said again there's more neuronal cell bodies glial cells and you have your motor neurons or 
uh, like your ventral horn, your anterior horn here, no? Whereas your white matter, there are more nerve fibers and their branches and their synapses. They surround the gray matter, the periphery, and they contain tracts of myelinated axons. Okay, keep it short. Uh, you just pause and read through this na lang. So it's a, just a, a repetition of what I said. Okay, and these here are your the white the fine spaces. So uh, they are mo the white matter are here na lang. Let's just tackle this now. So then um, uh, it will be better for our understanding. White matter also contains glia but consists mainly of axons, letter A, whose myelin were lost during preparation, okay? Because uh, usually it's dipped in solvents and sometimes uh, uh, like alcohol or ethanol and the ethanol might lose uh, some components of the myelin sheath. That's why it will be lost when you stain it, all right? And the gray matter here, so they have more glial cells, neuronal cell bodies, as what's encircled no? and boxed here. So next is your cerebellum. Your cerebellum has three layers. Uh, the outer molecular layer, which is a network of nerve fibers, branches, and their synapse, and they are scattered neuronal cell bodies. But if you look at it here, it's very uniform and smooth in appearance. And this is taken in the lab, okay? So this is in the lab. The inner granular layer is defined as an area with, that is very densely packed with neuronal cell bodies. How I remember this is granular, so granules of juice powder. So very dense in appearance, unlike the smooth uniform appearance of your outer molecular layer. And in between here is your layer where you can appreciate Bergen G cells. So when you answer, always make your answer complete, okay? Outer molecular, inner granular. And if spinal cord was to ependymal cells, cerebellum is to Purkin G cells. Okay, so this is again a, rep a repetition of the previous slide. Glial cells is inner, so inner gran- Ah, uh, sorry, granular layer is inner, so it's inner granular. Very dense like packed neuronal cell bodies and the outer molecular layer here. Okay, and here what is encircled is your Purkinje cells, all right? So just remember the three layers, the specimen, which is your cerebellum, and the special cell showcase here, which is your Purkinje cell. Okay, we'll move on to your Vater Pacinian corpuscle. This is found in your thick skin in the hypodermis or reticular dermis area. So these are concentric lamellations, 15 to 30. These layers here, no, that surround. Of these are concentric lamellae of flat Schwann type cells and collagen, surrounding a highly, uh, unmyelinated, a highly branch unmyelinated axon. Okay. So they this, Peter Pacinian corpuscle or this specimen also functions for as a deep pressure sensor and it will also sense coarse touch and vibrations okay and just remember this is the specimen where is it located its function as well okay and we'll proceed so the next one is your spinal and terminal ganglion the spinal ganglion here are afferent or pseudo unipolar neurons with single processes they relay impulses from the skin or muscles towards the CNS, okay? So from the periphery to your CNS. They have they are surrounded by areolar connective tissue and they have prominent fish eye nucleus. Also, they have satellite cells, okay? Satellite cells that functions to insulate the soma or cell body to prevent direct contact of areolar connective tissue with areolar connective tissue so therefore they are protective or cushioning in function if we zoom in closer this dot here uh in red is your satellite cells if i erase that here uh, it's clear and evident 
there's a satellite cell. And please try to visually imprint this in your head that spinal ganglion have fishy nuclei. They're tightly packed and dense. Oh. And uh, they have satellite cells. Very different to how here a terminal ganglion looks like. So I hope you don't forget, Jude, uh, what the spinal ganglion is or what they look like if you're being asked to identify the specimen. No? That is, this is terminal ganglion. Okay, identify cell. That is a satellite cell. What is its function? This is its function. Okay, so your terminal ganglion here have no surrounding capsule or satellite cells. They are multipolar neurons and they are found in the ileum and urinary bladder. How you can also remember the function is you write a letter T and you put a, you put a head on it. Okay, so they function to send impulses from your CNS going down to the periphery to either your smooth muscles or glands and such. Okay, an example of this is in your ileum, no? How, unlike your spinal ganglion, which is, you know, they're densely packed, they're like many spinal ganglion in one field or visual field, like they're packed like sardines. In terminal ganglion, you see this in between uh, intersp interspersed tissue, okay? Uh, sorry, interspersed tissue. <laughs> it's first. Interspersed tissue, like from one layer. So this is uh, this is inner circular outer longitudinal or uh, you'll come to find out later in your digestive system uh, exercise that in one organ there's more than meets the eye there's many layers no? from the tunica mucosa submucosa going down to the muscularis mucosae layer anyways there are they are found in between layers no if you see the orientation here is different as to here and it changes here again and your terminal ganglions are here no this one in green and these okay so we'll go to the next uh, this is uh, f taken from the internet okay so credits to this uh, link and website and also to this user as what I saw in the internet so uh, I was surprised and happy to know that the pictures represented here this is taken from the lab are very much similar to hers as well or this uh, jelly joe nuts so and all our definitions is similar and on point no and the pictures are very much the same okay so it's very much the same this is spinal ganglion then sleep packed they have satellite cells they relay impulses from the skin's muscles glands towards the cns thermon and they still have fish eye nuclei both actually have no and they are afferent and pseudo unipolar neurons as to your terminal ganglion which are afferent neurons or they are multipolar and they relay from the cns towards the periphery remember letter t okay cns periphery and they have no capsule cells okay so remember these pictures remember your terminal ganglion and your spinal ganglion all right fish eye nucleus for both and the last one is in your nerve cross section so uh and this is found in your sciatic nerve it's just important to understand the organization and orientation of your nerve fibers or cross sections so let's start with this so the endoneur yeah the epineurium is the whole lining to or it will cover the peripheral nerve jud okay this outer sheath okay whereas in your perineurium your perineurium will sheath one fascicle so if this is subdivided this is your perineurium epineurium is the outermost here perineurium and if you go really one by one per nerve fiber it will be your endoneurium as what as depicted here no in your electron microscope so it's also good to note that there are vas nervorum okay vas nervorum so these are blood vessels that may uh, supply your nerve fibers or nerves that's a uh, that's one term uh, to remember okay vas nervorum 
And here, we'll try to dissect each. The E here will represent your epineurium. It's the outermost covering that sheaths everything. V is a vein here. Take note of it's irregular like lumen. A is an artery. So very circular and uniform lumen. Perineurium here, no? It sheaths each fascicle, whereas your endoneurium is in each nerve fiber and jet. Okay, so just remember that those three sciatic nervous are example specimen that orientation and organization by means of endoperi and epineurium. Okay, and then they're arranged in fascicles and vas nervorum. Here, Nux is uh, a small nerve fiber. So just remember that the myelin sheath, uh, myelin sheath is produced by a Schwann cell, okay? Myelin sheath is produced by a Schwann cell. So just similar to the orientation balik, uh, previous, the, uh, this is a fascicle man. So this is the perineurium. One covering is the endoneurium, okay? Of a nerve of a single nerve fiber the nucleus here so uh the nucleus so uh, the way to help always identify a cell is to the nucleus like your ependymal cells and your perkinji cells and so on and so forth so that said the nucleus here is of a schwann cell and the the outer covering here that sheath is your myelin sheath okay the space here so myelin sheath and that will make each uh, nerve and a sheath budget with your endoneurium okay so that's just important just like here uh, representation again remember the F here is your fibroblast so fibroblast is, uh, is characteristically always an elliptical like nucleus okay whereas your S is your Schwann cell and they're said to be more oval okay so this is a longitudinal section of your nerve and this is what i previously showed that's why we appreciate here your schwann cell and the myelin sheath around okay and then uh, the last part is just that uh if you see this anywhere in your succeeding slides or when you know uh nerves are said to be uh, nerves in other areas for example in your mesentery no are said to be wavy and tortuous uh, in appearance, no? So here, this is a nerve labeled N, N, and those are nerves, okay? And I think that's all for this week. Thank you very much, and good luck always, and all the best.